Welcome to the Image and Wire show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Image and Wire. And we have a great episode for you all today. We're going to be talking about uh, echocardiography and how AI has a chance to really democratize uh, access to echo, um, which is a really important topic. And we have, the, I couldn't think of any better guests to be talking about this subject. So we have uh, the co-founders of us to ai James Hare and Dr. Karen Lam. And hi, good to see you again. We have Dr. Matt Hav Swami Nathan uh, from Duke joining us, and good to see you all here. Uh, before we jump into the main topic, maybe you can give a quick introduction to yourselves and um, and what you do at your organizations, and then then we'll jump into it. Sure, I'll start. I'm James Hare, uh, co-founder and CEO uh, of Us Two AI. I am basically the overhead and I help organize all the rest of the people on this call who get the stuff done. That's really interesting and what we look forward to talking about. And I'm Dr. Carolyn Lam. I'm a professor at Duke National University of Singapore, senior cardiologist at the National Heart Center in Singapore and co-founder of ASUI. I'm an anesthesiologist specifically in cardiac anesthesia and perioperative care and critical care. And I have a specific interest in perioperative echo and point of care ultrasound. And I just think that, uh, that uh, you know, we have to go down this route of making sure that it's in everyone's hands. It's a wonderful technology and it needs to be everywhere. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that, that the need to be everywhere. And, you know, I would say that one of the things that I'm seeing as I'm covering the, um, the imaging space each week is to talk about uh, echo expanding to new areas um, and basically healthcare overall expanding to new areas. And I'm curious, from an echo perspective, what's what's driving this trend? Yeah, um, I'm happy to take that. Uh, you know, I think um, echocardiography has been around for a long time. So it's kind of a mature diagnostic specialty. And I think what has limited its application right now is how it requires specialized um, applications, specialized training, specialized interpretation. And the, from the technology side, we've been able to make sound do a lot, right? Ultrasound only travels at a specific speed and no faster than that. But we've been able to process the signals that come out of it pretty well and, and add to the interpretation in diagnosis and stuff like that. But I think it's reached a point where it needs to expand beyond the traditional borders of just diagnostic ultrasound for heart diseases in clinics and in specialized settings with specialized people. I think the, we've succeeded in making the technology so easy to use and so easy to interpret that you know, one often says that, well, it's, we've made it so easy that even a machine could do it. Well, a machine is able to do it now and perhaps even better. And that eliminates the kind of variability that plagues echocardiography interpretation for has plagued it for a very long time. So I think you know, the time has come for uh, because we have the technology that's made it easier and it needs to expand these borders of diagnosis, go into the, not only to the fields, but even, you know, do two things that all just want. A, they want it to become simpler. They want it to become faster, right? And they want it to become easy to do. So if once that happens, you know, it's it sort of, we are golden from that point onwards. <laughs> You know, Jay, can I add, Dr. Swaminathan, to hear those words coming from him to me is like, oh my goodness, right? Because I've trained so long to be able to read an echo. <laughs> you know, we've had to do medical school and then do residency and then do cardiology specialty training and then do cardiology echo subspecialty training to be able to read the echocardiogram. Uh, that's the kind of expertise that's usually needed to interpret the images. Whereas to obtain the images, it's true that we can just be taught. Frankly, I was taught hands-on for a week and then after that is just practice uh, uh, to do that. And it's such a safe technology. So you've got this big divide where to get the images is a very safe tool. You can be taught in a week, but then 
it gets stuck in the ivory towers of the cardiologist because you have to train 20 years. Oh no, it's not 20 years. Don't don't date me. You know, 10 at least, right? To, to, to be able to read them. And and the the thing is, when we reach that stage, very few of us stop to question that can a machine do it? <laughs> like us are even better than us because my gosh, it's been 10 years. So we just like keep doing it the way we're taught, you know, and it takes someone, I suppose, like. James Hare to come from a totally different field and to just tell us, you can't keep doing this. This is ridiculous. It's like, and it is actually now that I am where I am, he's right. I, I, I'm humble. Um, who knew that we could get computers to do some of the basic things that I trained for 10 years to do? But it's true. <laughs> I, I just want to add on to that, if I may. Uh, you know, it's like um, saying that video video photography used to be the domain of professional photographers. Now, if you look at people's phones, they've got professional quality videos on it. You know, you can do an, you can do an EKG at home. Uh, things have become simplified. And so, you know, all those fears that we had of, well, experts rule that technology. Well, the, the true advance is when you don't need the experts anymore. But I wouldn't say that you don't need them at all. You do need people for decision making. You do need the human brain that has been augmented with AI, not human brain which has not been assisted with AI. And that's, I think, the difference. I love so, that. Well said. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious. So we're we're starting to see some data about how like these things that you know once lived in the world of theory or maybe relied on James to come up with this idea. Um, what when we when we look at the data that's starting to come out, what you know, what does it say? Well, can I take that because I I'm so excited to share uh, what we've just presented at the American College of Cardiology, and this was a trial we call Pains H F P A N E S heart failure, and all we wanted to do was to prove what. Dr. Swaminathan and I had just been chatting about that we could get complete novices to be able to do a screening echocardiogram or ultrasound of the heart and interpret it as good as experts because of augmented intelligence or AI. So what we did is we got a hundred patients who were referred to our specialist centers for suspected heart failure, which is the commonest cause of hospitalization among the elderly. And we got complete novices to do an echo using our AI, us to AI combination with a point of care ultrasound, the Echonos Cosmos. Now, when I say complete novice, I really mean it. They were not medical. They were not nurses, for example, who already knew human anatomy. They were completely non-medical. Um, frankly, sometimes I think that makes teaching a little bit easier because there were no biases. But we did have to spend a little bit of time teaching them what the heart is and that there were four chambers and you know uh, how it sits in the chest. So we took two weeks. We, we wanted to be very careful to train them well um, because the first week was about anatomy and and just the heart. And then the second week was about hands-on using AI, literally following the guidance like you would when you're playing a computer game, right? And then allowing the AI to interpret the images. And what we showed basically is that these novices were able to obtain clinically relevant images and obtain reports in practically all cases, 96%. So the feasibility is very important. And then the accuracy of the reports were comparable to experts, were comparable to experts using the full cart with sonographers, trained sonographers who have obtained it in a full cart-based echo and so on. So it was really, really nice to see that. And then because some have advocated, why don't we just do a blood test? forget about imaging anyway, Let, let's say we just use a blood test. So we compared the accuracy to the most commonly used biomarker or blood uh, test that we use for heart failure, and that's NT-pro-BNP, the natriuretic peptide. 
And when we did that, we found that the novice echo was more accurate than the simple blood test alone in predicting the presence of heart failure. So we're really excited about it. I mean, it, of course it is um, uh, um, significant uh, milestone, uh, which is why we're presenting it at the American College of Cardiology. But I think the implications are, you know, we have to go further with this. This is now proof of principle, but now we really have to adopt it on a wider scale. Let's talk about that. So, you know, we talked about uh, Echo's ability to be democratized and to reach all the people who, who could use it. Uh, when we look at those results, um, you know, what does that say about AI's ability to kind of achieve, help Echo achieve that, that level of democratization? Yeah, I think that um, the important thing that we showed here is that task shifting can work. So instead of keeping it all inside, as I said, the ivory towers of a specialized heart institution, now we could really think about at least democratizing it to primary care. If primary care, we can get an electrocardiogram, why can't we get an echocardiogram? You know, and then because they were complete novices, maybe we could start by even just training a nurse or a phlebotomist, a technician uh, to do those screening echoes. And then why not even like start doing them in patients' homes? And maybe there I should hand over to James to tell us what we've got planned. <laughs> That's here. It's us two at home. It's true. We have a big initiative called Us Two at Home. Uh, the whole goal is, of course, expanding healthcare beyond hospital walls. Um, and the way we're going about that is a combination of things. I mean, I, I think, you know, for most of the history of this company, we focused very hard on building what, what we think is the best AI solution for, for reading echo in the industry. Um, and, you know, then we've sort of gone through the expansion phase. We now have regulatory approval in over 25 countries. We've got direct sales teams to, to sell this stuff on three continents. Um, but the truth is you can only grow so fast organically, right? So right now, uh, our main focus to get this technology out there and into people's hands is partnering. Uh, you know, here at the ACC in New Orleans, uh, anyone can come and see we're partnering with the best in the business. At the, who have the best relationships with hospitals. Uh, and so, I mean, you can, we, we welcome everyone to come visit our booths and see us. We'll be partnering with in the booths. You can see our technology with Viz AI, AI Doc, Change Healthcare, and Ascend Cardiovascular. All of these, you know, very, very uh, impressive companies have vetted our technology, looked at it, and said, this is the solution uh, we want for, for Echo. And they're helping us to, to spread the word and spread the technology. And even on top of that, you know, we've just announced these new partnerships uh, that we've done with Brigham, Brigham and Women's Hospital, where uh, their core lab is uh, completely converting over to our technology. Nuance, uh, you know, Nuance, who is um, now part of Microsoft, uh, is also a, a fantastic partner of ours, and Terra Recon. All of these, all of this news has just come out, and it's it's all there to help us you know, with our mission to, you know, give everyone access to their heart health. If I could just add also, you know, build on that, uh, what, what you're seeing here is this sort of paradigm shift in the amount of training required to actually interpret some of these images. And this is what Dr. Lamb was referring to earlier. It, 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 two weeks. I mean, two weeks. Uh, and I think two weeks was also overdoing it a little bit because it could have been achieved in one. Uh, and, and, and so this is what this is the kind of, uh, you know, sort of dramatic time reduction you're talking about in the ability to have an interpretable image from an expert, which in this case would be a machine. And, and, and that's a paradigm shift. Once we achieve that level of simplification of training, then it becomes more democratizable then it doesn't become restricted to a two-year training or a one-year training or a three-year training or whatever that might be in, the, you know, in specific didactics and labs and stuff like that. Now it can be in someone's hands. And this is exactly what you know, smartphones did or laptops did or tablets did. It put the technology in everyone's hands. It put apps in everyone's hands. And so that's what I think we're talking about this time shift in the amount of training required to essentially obtain an interpretable image for determining what kind of heart disease you have. And, and that, that's phenomenal. 
I agree. It is phenomenal. It's it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and it makes you want to scan yourself now, doesn't it, Jake? Well, for sure. <laughs> if I, I, I'm one of those people who prefers not to know what's going on, but uh, <laughs> but, but in theory, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things I'm curious about uh, more than what's going on with me is uh, is uh, okay. So we have essentially like uh, this scientific proof, and we have this technological proof. Um, but also things are going to have to happen in order for it to actually have become societal, right? Um, when we look forward, what are the types of either business or clinical or scientific um, or technical tipping points that you kind of expect to see that are going to have to happen in order for all the patients and all the clinicians or all the novices turned clinicians out there to actually um, be delivering ECHO to the masses? So in addition to the, the partnerships that I described, I think, um, you know, I, I'd like to just touch a bit on what was said earlier about that. I mean, I, the key bottleneck is speed and ease. Uh, so, you know, I, I think, you know, everyone else on this call who are clearly well above my pay grade have explained the clinical need. The clinical need is clear. Mass adoption is, is needed uh, to improve our general health. Um, but the thing is, like with most tech platforms, to get mass adoption, ease and speed needs to increase dramatically. Um, I mean, we've we've gone to partners who've explained that they have echo wait list that they measure in the years, not days or month, years in some of our markets. So there's a clear, clear need for something, you know, a, a significant change. So that's been our focus, working on, you know, ease and speed to ease those bottlenecks. And we've just now come out with a, a product to solve for that. We call it Us to Connect. And we believe it's a, a step function jump from zero to one in what it delivers in terms of, of speed and ease in general. So imagine um, you can take a small tablet running our software uh, and connect it to any piece of Echo hardware from sort of the, from any manufacturer but, and even connect it wirelessly if you want, it's up to you um, in order to do completely hands-free completion of Echo reports, disease detections, doing the full uh, annotations, everything, completely automatic, like zero touch. And uh, we've just started showing this solution uh, to potential partners and, and the reaction is, it, it, it's it's moving and oppressive. So so imagine your small tablet and you go up to either, you just set it down next to either one of those big echo carts, you know, from GE or Philips in a hospital, or even a small mobile device in the field somewhere in Tanzania or wherever. Um, you, you just have that tablet next to your echo device. And while you're capturing the images, you just glance over and you see the echo report, the patient report populating in real time. So that by the time you put down your probe, capturing the images, there's no more sort of capture image and measure, capture, stop, measure, better, calculate back, look at, no more of that. Just capture the images on your probe. You put it down, you glance over, and there's the complete patient report. Everything automatically done real time. That is us to connect. We believe it's the future of Echo and it's here today. It's really quite significant. And the reaction we've gotten from the clinical community is just incredible because it addresses two things. First, we now no longer need to worry about the Wi-Fi. Now you have to understand to a lot of us health institutions, the internet is a bad word. It's like it creates anaphylactic reactions because of security issues. So to eliminate that need for an internet connection is a huge leap forward in terms of ease. The second thing is that real time. We've never been able to have a report at the same time as we're echoing. And it's really important because when it's a technician um, obtaining the images, he or she will not know if the images are good enough to get every piece of information they need. And so if there's a decision point there of whether to let the patient go or to keep the patient there while we look at the images and try to measure and see that we've got everything. So it really increases time if you've got to stop, hey, wait for a while, I'll go look. And the doctor still also has to look okay, an hour later, all right, I think we're good, you go. It's So now that's gone because you can see it populate. So you know it's good enough. And you can tell the patient even, hey, all right, 
you can go now. And then all you have to do is do a, um, uh, it's still a decision support tool. So a doctor still needs to sign over it, but it really, really speeds up um, the process a lot when it can be real time. So I just wanted to emphasize what a, what a big leap uh, these two things are um, for us in the clinical world. Um, Dr. Swaminathan, I mean, I- Yeah, sure. um, no, absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. But you know, I, I think when, when Jake, you asked about what would be the tipping point to get it to everyone, I think James also you know, hit that nail on the head when he said the ease, that simplicity needs to be there. Once it's simplified enough, you know, it can be adopted more widely. And you just have to look at sim similar examples or analogous examples, you know, which exist all around us. Uh, you know, for instance, the, my, my, my watch will tell me if I have a fib or not, right? My phone will tell me whether I have an ECG abnormality or not. Uh, I mean, even my weighing scale tells me what my body fat index is. You know, so, so, I mean, th this is how it's been adopted now. So if you look at the, uh, what is it, the Rogers theory of uh, diffusion of innovation, you know, the different phases in which people uh, adopt new innovative technologies, you've got to believe in it. You've got the early adopters and then you've got the laggards all the way, you know, and everyone in between. But the point here being that there has to be some sort of simplicity and that simplicity will drive adoption, I think. The simpler we make it, uh, the easier it is to adopt. The second part, you know, what Dr. Lamb was talking about was that internet is a bad word. Let's not forget that internet is also difficult in rural communities and in remote parts of the world. You don't have that connectivity. So in that second aspect of access, ease of access, having something that is independent of reporting from Wi-Fi or the cloud or whatever it is, and can be actually in a provider's hand, an untrained provider, mind you, is even more valuable to the communities they serve. Oh, I love that. Could I add just one other consideration as a co-founder who's also medical? Um, one thing about us to AI that everybody has to know, we lead by the science though. And I think one of the things that makes adoption possible is that we need to show, we hold ourselves up to the highest scientific level. And I think Thank you, Jake, so much for showcasing a lot of the um, sort of the work we've done that have been published in high level journals, high impact journals, um, showing that it's really high quality science that we're aiming for. Hence the description of what we just um, presented at the American College of Cardiology. We felt that we couldn't just tell novices they could do it. We need to show and prove it in a proper way against the real gold standard expert. And in our next series, we've got a whole lot of studies lined up. One is a global implementation of the approach of community-based screening. Another, uh, so in multiple countries around the world, so not just in Singapore anymore, multiple countries. Um, another is taking it even one step further, exactly as James has pushed us to do, which is getting your echo at home. So we've just completed a study as well, where we've done and shown that we could safely, effectively get nurses trained in point of care ultrasound and obtain echoes in a patient's home, in the comfort of the patient's home, and just with a very, very easily uh, portable um, instrument that as you've just heard now, may not even need internet connection. So you can imagine how this can now be even democratized to rural areas for things like rheumatic heart disease screening, another program that we are anxiously uh, setting up. So it just keeps, it's a gift that keeps giving. <laughs> you know, I, I would, Thanks for Caroline, I would go even, yeah. even beyond that and say that, you know, you remember the days when if we wanted blood pressure taken, we'd have to go to a doctor's office. And then we just go to a grocery store and put our arms into yeah. one of those devices and, and, and get a reading. Then we got blood pressure machines home. At least older people like me have uh, blood pressure machines at home. So the point is that, you know, it, it has to be simple and easy to use and you do it at home. So I would argue that you probably will have to get to a point where you don't even need the nurse at home to do the yeah. ultrasound. You can give a simpler machine yeah, to okay. a patient than they would do it. And, uh, you know, a, a remote expert could say, well, you need to up your dose of something or decrease the dose of something. 
Oh my gosh, I love that. And don't worry, James also has a blood pressure thing happening. <laughs> <laughs> um this is i have to say this is really exciting stuff and it's um you know we started off by talking about like that the need is there right that there's and we talked about that throughout throughout this chat that um that there's far more patients out there who who need this monitoring and need these need these diagnoses than than what we can do right now uh or even come close to what we can do right now and it so the needs there it it's really looking like the technology is there and we're starting to see thanks to all this this research that you're doing we're starting to see that like it can be done um and it can be done in a way that's easy for the clinicians but also easy from a technological perspective which um i think i kind of underemphasized in my mind before now but it seems it seems obviously so important um, when somebody comes to my house and needs to like access the wi-fi i have to like dig through drawers to try to figure out how to get them on there. So I can only imagine an elderly patient who may or may not have Wi-Fi in the first place. So um, uh, great work uh, to all of you. It's, uh, first, thank you for coming and sharing all, all your, your thoughts on this and wonderful ideas. And then also for all the work that you've been doing to, um, you know, to do something that really will save lives and, and bring the healthcare system to where it needs to be if it's if the goal is to take care of all these patients. So it's really special. It's our pleasure, Jake. And thank you so much for, for giving us this platform to announce the news. I just want to encourage anybody who wants to see it themselves, just go to uh, www.s2ai and click on book a demo. We'll be happy to show you.